Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Philippians chapter 2. And we'll be speaking about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And as you're turning there, I want to say thank you so very much for all of the food that you collected and brought by to the church. Uh, we've collected 25 bags this week, and I took them up to White Marsh Shopping Center where Reverend Bill West and a friend of his uh, was gathering them up and going to carry them out to Bellamy uh, later today. So I want to thank you, and we will continue to collect uh, the non-perishable food items and the personal hygiene items, especially for, for the babies, uh, the wipes and the, and the diapers. Uh, we got several packs of those, and I, I just want to thank you uh, for helping and reaching out and also that when we get official word or so for the Hurricane Laura relief, I'll let you know about that too. Uh, but as of now, if you want to make a financial contribution, I would encourage you to do that through the BGAV.org, Baptist General Association of Virginia, BGAV.org. And you can make the check out to them and on the memo line put Hurricane Laura relief. Uh, right now it's just hard to go down there and, and do anything because of destruction and the, and the damage. But we'll try to keep our ear open for that and let you know when, when I know something further. So if you're turning to Philippians chapter 2, uh, we think about that Jesus not only made a sacrifice on the cross to save us from our sins, but that he also made a sacrifice by leaving heaven and coming down here to earth uh, to be with us. Uh, he left all that glory and all that splendor in heaven uh, to be born like a human, to, to walk on the earth, uh, experiencing the events that you and I experience day to day. Uh, what, a, what a sacrifice he made for us. And we, we talk about heaven and how we look forward uh, to going there to be with our Lord. But Jesus left heaven to come and to be with us and I, I think what a wonderful sacrifice that was to teach us how to think of others to think of what other people need to to help one another to love one another and that's what Paul is going to try to be teaching us tonight in Philippians chapter 2 reaching out and, and helping others and, and not thinking too highly of ourselves let's let's pray first father again we come before you to thank you. Uh, just as the church at Philippi was learning that Paul wanted the church to remain united in Christ and he called them to be united in their spirits, in their task that they perform, in their confidence in Jesus Christ. Uh, we urge all of us through the indwelling of your spirit to help us focus on the needs of others before we focus on our own. We pray now in the very strong and loving name of Jesus. Amen. So let's take our Bibles and turn to Philippians chapter 2, uh, beginning at verse 1. And what does Paul say to us here in the Scriptures? Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of spirit, if any affliction and mercy, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded. I like that word, like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. And let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Uh, this passage uh, truly focuses on humility. Now, humility means to have a, a modest or low view of our importance. Not that we don't think much of ourselves, not that we don't want to take care of ourselves. It, it's not talking about that. It, it's just saying that that we don't look upon ourselves as being so important. We should think of ourselves as, as servants, 
uh, seeking to help others, to, to look for what's better in the situation that could help them to see Jesus Christ, not to think too, too highly of ourselves. I think about that most every Friday when, when we're playing golf. Oh, we tee off and we think we fit that golf ball way down the fairway. Oh, we're just looking down the fairway trying to find that golf ball and we get in the golf cart and we go taking off down the fairway and we're looking for the golf ball and we drive this way and that way. And our golf ball never goes down the center. It goes this way or that way. And we're trying to find it here and there and all of a sudden we just stop and, and look back where we came from and there's a golf ball way back there. We just think too highly of our golf game, don't we? Uh, Jesus is telling us through Paul that, that we don't think too highly. We're, we're not that important, first and foremost. That the unity of the body building up people in Christ is more important than any one individual person. You know, we, we don't need buildings named after us as believers in Christ. Uh, we don't need to have you know, books dedicated to us of anything. As long as our name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that's the most important place for our name to be recorded. So Jesus sets the example for us when he invited, or when we invite Jesus into our, our hearts to save us. Uh, we can do things. We can, we can show how much the Lord cares about people through our own lives uh, the most caring event that we could ever do for someone it's it's very important that we reach out and answer the call for for food collection and to help people with with food and and with other needs that they have that we call that benevolent ministry but the most important event the most important gift the most important exercise that we could ever do would be to present the plan of salvation to someone, simply saying, this is what Jesus did for me. Come and let me tell you what he can do for you. This is what Jesus did for me. He'll do the same for you. That's the most important. That's the most important way that we can help someone. And what joy we can experience, how, how fulfilling it makes us feel. Not that we're important by no means, but it makes us feel joyous and excited that one of our family members or a friend or a co-worker came to know Jesus and that we'll be with them in eternity. As we seek to be mindful of others, uh, we look to Jesus for the greatest example of humility. Of all the, the, the miracles that Jesus performed, he never once said, look at me. Watch me. Pay attention to me. The Bible says this, that Jesus is Lord. Now, what does that mean? Paul tells us in these first few verses of chapter 2 that we, we have to humble ourselves, that, that we're not more important than Jesus, that we all need Jesus as the Lord of our lives. So here, here's what that means now. Let's pick back up at the scriptures at, at verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God. It means they're, they're together. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, together, together. But made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant. And he didn't come down as a king. He didn't come down as a governor he didn't come down as a scribe or a Pharisee, as a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. There is coming a day when every person who has ever lived will bow and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. You know, we, we see all these sports figures taking a knee and bowing uh, right before their, their sporting event takes place. Beloved, the, the only knee that we really need to take, the only knee that we need to bow to is Jesus Christ. He's the Lord of lords. 
and the King of Kings. For every Christian, we, we get to make that great confession every day, you know, that he is Lord, uh, moment by moment. He is Lord of every moment that you and I live in. And Paul is asking us to, to surrender, to, to appeal to us of the sovereign rule, of, of the ownership of the Lord. See, that's, that's the central message here in the Bible. What does the Bible say? Well, back here at the Genesis, up here to Revelation, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. And are we attempting to, to live the Christian life in our own uh, strengths and our own powers? If we think we can do this on our own, uh, we're going to be awful restless. Uh, we're going to be in moments of despair. And that's, uh, that's what the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is, to teach us and to comfort us on how to allow Jesus to be the Lord, not us be the boss. Uh, Singer-songwriter Natalie Grant uh, recorded a, uh, a song that really touched me and I think addresses this issue of Jesus of being, being Lord of our lives. She, she titled her song, King of the World, and I'm going to bless you by not singing that for you, but I would like to read the words to you so that it might help us to understand about Jesus being the Lord in our own lives and the struggle that we have of, of, of allowing him to be the Lord. Accepting Jesus as Savior, uh, that's, that seems to be the easier part. Uh, making him Lord of everyday life, of everyday decision, living to his glory. Uh, that's, that's the tough part. That's the growth part. That's, that's the faith issue. Uh, that's when Satan starts throwing those spiritual fiery darts at us to try to get us to, to turn away. But here's what, here's what Natalie Grant wrote uh, when she recorded King of the World. I tried to fit you into the walls inside my mind. I tried to keep you safely in between the lines. I tried to put you in the box that I've designed. I tried to pull you down so we are eye to eye. When did I ever forget that you've always been king of the world? I try to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world. How would I make you so small? When you're the one who holds it all, what, when did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? Just a whisper of your voice can tame the seas. So who am I to try to take the lead? Still I run ahead and think I'm strong enough when you're the one who's made me from the dust. When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? I try to take life back right out of your hands, the king of the world. How could I make you so small when you're the one who holds it all? When did I forget that you've always been king of the world? When did I forget that you've always been king of the world? Beloved, Jesus raised an important question to us from Luke's gospel, chapter 6. Well, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? See, that's what Natalie Grant was trying to say. I try to lead around. I, I try to solve it all. I try to do it all, and yet I forget you're the king. I'm not the king. Jesus says, you call me Lord, Lord, and you still don't do what I say. Sometimes we, we, we sing in church, bring forth a royal diadem, crown him Lord of all. You know, it's one thing to crown him with our lips, but is he really the Lord of our lives? See, the Apostle Paul here uh, in Philippians, when he's talking about the Lordship of Jesus Christ, he's referring to Jesus as being the owner, the the boss, the, the master. Salvation through Jesus Christ, it's not a smorgasbord. Now, as much as I love fellowships and, and being together with everyone, uh, salvation's not, not a smorgasbord. We, we have so much variety of items on the buffet line that we can, we can take what we want and reject what we don't want. Salvation 
Salvation is not the cafeteria line. Uh, Jesus, Jesus isn't our Savior, and we, we pick and choose when he's going to be our Lord. Uh, many today, I think, as Jesus' day, believed in him as Savior, and they believed about him and what he was preaching about, but they were unwilling to follow them in their daily lives. Listen, no person can willingly and knowingly take Jesus as Savior and reject him as Lord. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a sign, that's an indication that they may not have understood their salvation. Uh, in order for salvation to be complete, Jesus saves us and he becomes our Lord of our everyday living. We sing, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. My all. My heart and my head, too. Do we realize that the word Savior uh, occurs only 24 times in the New Testament? While the word Lord is found 433 times. Salvation is first. Savior is first. But Lordship is every day. Savior is once. That one day, that one moment when you experience Jesus, when I experience Jesus as my Savior and Lord. He saved me that Sunday night. My dad was preaching the tap and the turnaround sermon. That's the only time I needed him as Savior. Now, since that day, I have needed him every moment as the Lord of my life. 24 times as Savior but 433 times as Lord. So someone pointed out that, that we, we may say you know, we're standing on the promises, but we are just really sitting on the premises. Uh, the New Testament teaches that not only faith in Christ, but following Christ, following him. That's, that's the Lordship. We follow him. We do what he's asked us to do, and we know what he wants us to do. We know where he's leading because we have the Holy Word. Beloved, we, we are not in a vacuum. We, we don't know what to do. We, we know exactly what to do because we can read what to do right here in God's Word. Paul wrote that, remember, that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So let's, let's pick on up at the next verse. Let's look now at chapter 2 of Philippians verse, verse 9 and see what, what Paul is telling us. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, those in heaven and those of earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Beloved, it's, it really is not a matter of will we confess him as Savior and Lord, but, but when, when. Uh, it is not in the too distant future. Paul says every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord in heaven and in earth and even under the earth beings in heaven, the beings here on earth, and the beings beneath the earth. Even those who follow Satan are going to one day have to say, yes, Jesus is Lord. And I want you to say that now. And I want us to live that now so we can get the joy and, and the sense of peace and the sense of, of accomplishment that our life really does matter. Not because our name's written on a building somewhere or we hold some office or we our name's in a book. Uh, that, that somebody dedicated to us? No. It's because we're written in the Lamb's book of life. Jesus is Savior and Lord. That's what gives us the greatest feeling. It, is Jesus the Lord of our life, our body, our thoughts, our time, our plans, our bank accounts, our recreation, even our church life? I urge us today to allow Jesus to be the Lord. I came across some uh, illustrations that someone had, had reminded me of and shared with me about uh, several years back was a, a rock star who was arrested for uh, possessions of illegal drugs. And he said, 
I'm against anything that interferes with my individual freedom. Boy, does that not sound familiar today with all that's going on in our society? I'm against anything that interferes with my individual freedom. Well, I was reading about the arrest record of Kenosha, Wisconsin, with the rioting's taking place there. And of all the hundreds of people that have been arrested, 102 are not even from Kenosha. They, they drove in so that they could just participate in the rioting. This rock star went on to say, as a nonconformist, I do what I want to do. No one can tell me what to do. Well, Mr. Rockstar, Jesus is the ultimate authority. He's the Lord of Lord, and he's the King of Kings. I hope you remember Billy Graham, a great evangelist. He was humble of spirit. He really was. He would put it together a uh, an evangelistic crusade behind the Iron Curtain. So this had to be before you know, the 1980s when the Iron Curtain came down. But his, his team didn't really want to go. Some of them didn't want to go. And so they were all praying about the will of God and, and really telling Dr. Graham not to go. And he said, listen, we may be fools, but we're going to be fools for Christ. We're going behind the Iron Curtain. And so at one of the particular uh, meetings there, uh, they, they knew that the student bodies of the university were going to be in uproar, uh, them preaching Jesus Christ versus uh, expounding upon their political system. But they invited a woman from, from Nigeria uh, to be the special music for that evening. And she came up wearing her, her tribal robe and, and bearing her, her tribal scars on her body. And, and she began to sing her witness of Christ as Lord. And when she began singing, oh, the students out there in the, in the audience began screaming and hollering at her. And, and they came along and took their textbooks and threw them at her while she was up there on the stage. And if you remember Cliff Barrows, the music director for Billy Graham, he went up on the stage to try to assist this woman off. And she wouldn't go. She was going to stay there and continue singing. One of the team members said, for a moment it looked like Stephen being stoned all the books flying up on the stage at this Nigerian lady. Here are some of the words that she sang. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus since I found in him a friend so kind and true. I would tell you how he had changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. And as she sang this, this hymn, a miracle took place. With tears streaming down her, her face, the crowd grew very quiet. They stopped throwing their textbooks up on the stage. They were witnessing a sincere believer. And when she finished, they said you could hear a pin drop out over that whole audience. Well, Billy Graham came up to the pulpit and Immediately, the first thing he did was he gave an invitation to that audience to come and to believe in Jesus as Savior and Lord. And because of that Nigerian woman's testimony, the sincerity of it, 327 people came forward at that invitation. They had seen the glow of Christ upon her head. And, and once she was... Uh, owned by tribal lords. She had the scars to prove all of that. Now she was bought by Jesus. She was owned by Jesus. Jesus was her Lord. And I pray that you and I will realize that we're not alone. We're not going to be defeated. We may be beaten up, but we're not going to be defeated because Jesus is our Savior and Jesus is our Lord. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, teach us about our need for, for our Heavenly Father through faith in Jesus Christ. Isaiah 45 tells us that salvation is for everyone, not just the Israelites. And the Bible makes it clear that God's people includes all of those who follow him by faith in Jesus Christ. 
Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Lord of all. He has fulfilled all of Israel's roles and gave all people now the opportunity to follow God. I pray that we will rededicate our faith to Jesus being the king of our world. It's in his precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And please remember, if you would like, to bring food by uh, during the church office hours, Monday through far, uh, Friday, 9 to 12. And you can also bring it Sunday morning during the morning worship service. As Jesus has blessed me as my Lord, I pray that he'll bless you too. Thank you.